All right, so here we have a problem with a, a car with an unspecified mass traveling around a flat circular curve in the road. So this is a centripetal force problem because we're told that the car is traveling in a, uh, in a circular path. And so the diagram that I have here is the, the best way to view this situation. And that is uh, the car is heading straight at us almost as if it's about to run us over. Like we're, we're standing in the road and here are the headlights of the car on my very uh, subpar diagram here. I'm definitely not an artist, uh, but the, the car is coming straight at us and this is the vantage point where we're gonna see all the uh, forces that are, that are gonna be important. And then I put a dot here. This dot represents the center of the circular path. Um, so let's label the forces. We're going to start with um, free body diagram. So we have gravity acting straight down. We have mg straight down. We have normal force straight up. There's normal force. And then there's a frictional force, which is keeping the car in the circular path. And this is a static friction, uh, static meaning uh, not moving, which is very strange for uh, many students because you're looking at the situation thinking, well, isn't the car moving? Well, yes, the car is moving, but it's not moving in this direction. It's not moving um, in this left, right, or X direction. The motion of the car is coming straight out of the screen you know, so if we call this the X direction and this the Y direction, uh, the motion would be in the Z direction coming straight out of the page. But in the X direction, you know, the car is not sliding left to right at all. Uh, so that would make this frictional force a static friction. Um, clean this up here. So, you know, just to make this idea more clear, if, if we looked at the car driving past us, so say like we're standing on the sidewalk and the car goes past us, so here's the car, you know, we would see mg down, we'd see the normal force up, just like we have here, and then, so say the motion is to the right here, say it's moving that way, this is just a different vantage point, the friction pointing behind the car, that would be a kinetic friction, um, kinetic because the, the motion is is in that direction. So anyway, not, not a enormously important concept. I, I would say that's important, but you know, it, it is a static friction and I, I know that's confusing for a lot of students. Okay, so back to this problem. So this is a static friction because there's no motion left to right. And uh, whether friction is static or kinetic, I mean, the equation is the same. Uh, it's mu times normal force. That's the equation for friction or that, that's mu static there. Okay, now the thing to recognize uh, <clears throat> that we have only one force that points to the center of the circle, and the nice thing here is that it points directly to the center. Uh, we're not gonna have to do any um, com you know, vector components, no sine, no cosine. This frictional force points directly to the center of the circular path which is gonna be, you know, it's gonna make life a little bit easy. So the next thing we do is we sum the forces in the X direction, we sum the forces in the Y direction. All right, whenever you do circular motion problems, you make the center of the circle positive. And the reason you want the center of the circle to be positive is because that's the direction uh, that centripetal acceleration always points. Whenever an object is in a circular path, there's a centripetal acceleration, and centripetal acceleration always points to the center. And it's, life is nice when you make your acceleration positive, as I'll point out again in a second here. Okay, so the only force we have in the x direction is friction, which I'm gonna write down as mu times normal force. That's the equation for friction. There are no other forces in the x direction. Right? And obviously by X, I mean that's X, that's Y. Um, the sum of the forces is always equal to MA. 
and this acceleration in the x direction is a centripetal acceleration because it points to the center of the circle. Centripetal acceleration always points to the center. And as I said earlier, we always want to make this acceleration positive. Um, now one thing we can do here, we, we know that the equation for centripetal acceleration is v squared over r, so let's go ahead and plug that in. Uh, so we'll erase this, and we're just going to plug in v squared over r. So that still is ma, but the a is v squared over r. So this is mv squared over r equivalent to ma. All right, now in the y direction, in the y direction, we have normal force up and mg down. Normal force up, mg down. Sum of the forces is always equal to ma. And if we look at this situation, in the, in the y direction here, there's no circular path and there's no linear acceleration. So there's basically no acceleration at all. That goes to zero. So we can basically just set this whole thing, since the a is zero, we can set the whole thing equal to zero. All right, now we're ready to answer the questions. So the first question is, what's the coefficient of friction, static friction, just meaning not moving, Remember, there's, there's no motion in the x direction here as the car goes around the bend. What's the coefficient of static friction between the tires and the road? So, uh, let's solve for normal force. Normal force is equal to mg. And then we're going to take this equation here. Let's bring this up. Um, so basically, when, when we plug in for normal force, so fn is mg, we're going to plug that in right there. This is going to give us mu mg, normal force is mg, equals m v squared over r. And remember, the mass of the car was not given, and, when, and whenever mass is not mentioned, that means it will drop out. So we have m on the left, m on the right. They cancel out, and we can now solve this for mu. So the coefficient is going to be equal to v squared over gr. Uh, the velocity, the given velocity, is 37 meters per second. Gravity is 9.8. And the radius of the circular path is 200 meters. So we punch this in, and we get a coefficient of 0.6985. And uh, the coefficient has no units. Um, as you can see here, this, this ends up being meter squared over second squared. And then the denominator is also meter squared over second squared. Coefficient has no units. All right, so that's the first question. The second question is find the maximum speed that this same car can have on a curve of radius 50 meters. Um, and you know what? I'm just reading this here. The thing that's not specified is that it's the same road because um, the assumption for part two is that the coefficient didn't change. So I guess I should make that clear right now. The maximum speed the car can have on the same surface, but with a smaller radius. So the idea is that the coefficient's the same. All right, so we're basically using uh, this equation. It's, it's the exact same setup, only the only thing that's happened is the radius is now smaller. So uh, I'm just going to pick up from here, right? Because the, the forces, not, you know, the smaller radius does not change the forces on the car. The only thing that changed here was that, you know, R got smaller. Instead of being a 200 meter radius, it's now a 50 meter radius. So uh, obviously the car cannot go the same velocity. So I'm going to take this equation that I circled and solve it for V. So V is going to be equal to the square root of mu g r. Uh, the coefficient remained the same. Uh, the only thing that would change the coefficient is if we had a different surface or a different set of tires. Um, the coefficient is a property of two things, of, uh, you know, 
it's, it's, the two, it's the two objects that are in contact with each other. Okay, so the coefficient is 0 0.6985, gravity is 9.8, and the radius of the circle is now 50 meters. And this gives us a velocity of 18.5 meter per second. Which you'll notice is half of the velocity at 37 meters per second. Um, another way to figure this out is what, what happened to the radius, you know, from 200 meters down to 50 meters, the radius was reduced by one-fourth. And so basically, you know, we have velocity equals square root mu gr, uh, where mu and g are constant. So the radius got reduced by one-fourth, and the square root of one-fourth is one-half. So I don't know if you followed that, but, you know, that's another way you could have just done it a little bit quicker. Um, mu is constant, g is constant. The radius got reduced by one-fourth. It's inside square roots. The square root of one-fourth is one-half, which tells us that reducing the radius to a fourth of its original value will um, result in the maximum velocity being half of what it was.